Know what I procrastinate about the most in my industrial designs? Power supply. Yep, I tend to get all the rest of my design finished. Then wash the dog, tidy up my documentation, change the oil in my car, reorganize my lab bench a bit, empty my spam folder. Anything to avoid having to think about how to make a nice stable 5 volt DC out of 24 volt DC. And power supply design is just unglamorous enough to be boring and just complicated enough to be challenging. And that makes it a prime target for procrastination. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. It's time to stop all the procrastinating about power supplies. My guest today is Tanil Medley from Texas Instruments. And we're going to talk about how to make industrial power supply design a breeze. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Texas Instruments power products. Hi, Tanil. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. All right. So say in my system, I have a 24 volt rail and I need five volt output. Tanil, I have a confession. I really don't want to design a DC to DC power supply. Well, the good thing about simple switcher power supplies is that you don't need a lot of time and a lot of expertise to design our parts into your application. So today what I would like to do is talk about a typical situation where you would have a 24 volt rail and some of the desired features. And then we can talk about how easy it is to get your power supply design designed in and get you to your end solution quickly. Excellent. Okay, so what we're looking at is, let's say your nominal input voltage is 24 volts, but you want the coverage from 18 volts to 42 volts in case you have different types of transients. What if you need five volts output, like you said, and your low current is two amps? Do you think that you would need synchronous rectification in your design? Sure. Okay, great. And then how about features such as frequency synchronization, low bomb count, and small solution size? Always. Oh, sounds great. The benefit of these is that a lot of today's boards require small solution size with the advancement of technology. So we design our parts to be designed into these end applications. All right. So you guys have a catalog of something like 40,000 parts. How do I find exactly what I need? Great question. We make it easy for all of our customers to be able to use Webbench to design their parts in. Only thing you need to do is go to www.ti.com. Two letters, ti.com. Once you go to ti.com, you will see the Webbench designer and you can easily enter in your power requirements. Once you enter in your power requirements, you can click on power architect or start design. Excellent. All right. So walk me through the rest of the process. Sure. So once you click on your start design button, you'll get the option to look at a module solution, which means it's completely integrated. Most of the external components are included inside the package. You can get something that's semi-integrated, meaning that the FETs are also included in the package, but you have to select the inductor. Or you can use a controller for those power experts that really want the design flexibility for their design. All right. Or what you can do is if you're not sure if you want a module or semi-integrated or a controller solution, you can compare all types. So for this example, we're going to compare all the types that we have. Let's do it. Great. So as you can see here, we have a total of 68 different parts. Wow. That's a lot of parts. Yeah. And I wouldn't want a busy designer to have to go through each one of those different parts. Yeah. So one of the key features is that you can select your features and it will help filter out your results. Okay. So in the beginning, you said that you want in synchronization. Yeah. So here is checked and you can also add more features. So you can click on this feature filter button and there you have your synchronous rectification and now you're down to three results. We also have frequency synchronization and an integrated switch as well. So integrated switches means that the internal FETs are included. Okay. Now you can see that we're down to three solutions. We have the LM46002, which is a simple switch switcher buck regulator. And we also have the Q-grade version. And then finally, we have the LMZ36002, which is a module. And actually, the LM46002 is the core of the module of the LMZ36002. Okay, so, Tanil, let's dive in a little more and tell me some details about these two. 
Okay, so for the LM46002, again, this is a synchronous buck regulator, which means that the FETs are included inside of the package, which makes it a more semi-integrated solution over a controller. The power module, it includes the FETs, it includes many of the external components are now inside of the package, and it also includes the inductor. So the benefit of a synchronous buck regulator is that you have more design flexibility because you are able to select all of your external components and there's less integration, but there's more integration than a controller solution because the FETs are included in size. It's not as discrete as a controller, but less integrated than a power module solution. Okay. With the power module solution, the benefit of this is that it's, it's literally a plug and play. So if you don't have a lot of time and you have a lot of things to do and you don't really have a lot of board space and you just want an easy to use, quick to market solution, a power module might be an ideal for you. Okay. So there are four main steps to designing a power supply. You have to be able to select the inductor, the output voltage, the input and output caps, and you also have to consider the layout guidelines. For the inductor selection, again, the power module, it's already included in the package, so you don't have to worry about selecting that. Setting the output voltage, you need a feedback resistor if you're going to go with the regulator solution. If you're going to go with the module solution, you will only need one resistor. The benefit of the output voltage for the buck regulator is that you get a wider output range all the way up to 28 volts for up to 60 volt input solution and then for the power module you only get up to 7.5 volts but again it is a plug and play solution yeah and then with the input and output caps because you need more external components we suggest using webbench to guide you through the design process for our power modules because you only need a minimum of three external components these external components can be selected straight from the data sheet okay and then for the layout guidelines, you are able to optimize your design for a regulator and for a power module. It's very easy to lay out and we'll go through that example. So this inductor thing you mentioned, what kind of things do I need to consider here? Good question. So in order to select your inductor, you need to be able to know the inductance value. You need to be able to calculate the winding resistance. You need to know the types of core material that you're gonna use inside the inductor. You need to know about the saturation current and also if you're gonna use a shielded versus unshielded inductor. The benefit of selecting the inductor is that, again, it does allow more flexibility. However, if you don't want to design a power solution and you really want a solution that's more integrated, then you can always look at a module solution where you don't necessarily need to select the inductor. But if you need that flexibility, you need to be able to perhaps save on cost by using an unshielded inductor, or you want to be able to have wider operating range, then you may want to consider a regulator. Okay, so tell me about the shielding part of this. Okay, again, you have two different types of inductors. You can use either a shielded inductor or an unshielded inductor. The benefit of a shielded inductor is that it helps to reduce EMI. So at the bottom here, you see two different images. The one on the left is an image of the magnetic field of a shielded inductor. Okay. And the image on the right is an image of an unshielded inductor. And as you can see, the magnetic field of the unshielded inductor is a lot larger, which means that you're going to have more noise. And if you have a noise sensitive solution, then you may want to consider it a shielded inductor. Okay. So what about size? Are there benefits in choosing a larger inductor? Sure. So with the larger inductor, you will have lower PCB temperature and you will also have lower loss. So on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that with this larger inductor, the PCB temperature is a lot less. However, you will have lower losses and your winding resistance will also be lower as well. For a small inductor, you will have higher losses and the board will get a lot hotter during operation. Okay, so for the semi-integrated solution, what do I need to think about when it comes to board layout? So the first thing you want to consider is the size of the inductor that you want to use and the type of inductor, whether you want a shielded versus unshielded inductor. For the sake of a low noise application, we would recommend a shielded inductor. And then also you want to ensure that the input capacitors are close to the ground pin and the VN pin as well. And for the fully integrated solution, board layout really isn't an issue, right? 
Actually, it's not. So with the LMZ36002, it's designed to be a plug and play solution. Only thing you would need or the minimal requirements of external components that you would need would be the input and output capacitor and the R set resistor to set the output voltage. So let's say that you only need up to 42 volts input. Well, you can also look at the LMZ34202, which is a pin to pin compatible of the LMZ36002, a 60 volt two amp module. Nice. Okay, so Tanil, I see a couple capacitors and a resistor, but how do you pick the values for those? Easily. In the data sheet, what we do is we include the capacitor values in the data sheet. So it's easy for you to be able to select the input and output values that you need without going through WebBench. Excellent. Okay, so what's going on inside this thing? Can we pop the hood? Of course we can. I'm sure you're asking, how are we able to get a small solution size 60 volt power module with comparable performance of the LM46002 without the external components? Yeah. Well, what we did was we included all of those external components inside of the package. So what you're looking at is a 10 by 10 QFM package where the thermal pads are at the bottom, the pins are easily accessible from the outside and you have all your capacitors and the internal compensation all included inside the module and over molded. Cool. So what if I want to change some of the defaults like the frequency or? That's a good question. So one of the key features of our power module as well as our regulator is that it has a default of 500 kilohertz. So let's say that you want one megahertz or want something 750 kilohertz or something like that. Well, only thing you would need is a resistor and you would be able to change the frequency settings. Okay. And the same thing with the UVLO settings, you can change that as well by adding to a voltage divider to the PVN pin. Okay. And the same thing for soft start. So you can increase the soft start time by using a soft start capacitor. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and give me some of a comparison between these two solutions. Okay, so what we're looking at here are two EVMs, evaluation modules for both the LM46002 and the LMZ36002. The device on the left, as you can see, you have the inductor, you have the regulator, and then you have all of the different external components that are packaged within this box. And then on the right-hand side, you have the LMZ36002, in which we saw that the inductor is actually embedded on top of the IC. And then also you have the input output capacitor and the resistors to set the output. With all of this comparison between the LMZ36002 and the LM46002, you may ask, what are the pros and cons of both? Yeah. Well, for a module solution, it's less engineering design time. It's purely a plug and play solution. There's smaller component inventory. There's less engineering time debugging because you don't need all those external components. Yeah. And then we qualify all of our devices to TI standards. So we have our regulator that's embedded inside of this package that's qualified. And then we requalify the module as well. Oh, okay. And then our devices have a very small solution size. Some of the cons may be that you do have a narrow operating range because it is a fixed solution. Yeah. You're not able to get a wider operating range as you could with a discrete solution. And then your bomb cost might be a little higher. Sure. For a discrete solution, there's definitely more design flexibility. You're able to optimize your design conditions. You have a lower total solution cost because you are designing your own discrete, so it is a lower cost. And then because this is a discrete solution, the heat is able to spread over a larger range. Sure. You also will get a small size with the optimized layout. And in the data sheet, you will see the optimized solution so that you can still get that small solution size with the semi-discrete solution. Some of the cons will be that it does require more design time because you do have to calculate the value of the inductor, you do have to configure your external circuit, and then you also will have a higher bomb count. Sure. Okay, so what if I want a more in-depth comparison between the two solutions I've narrowed down? Is that something WebBench can do? 
Actually, it is. Let's say that you decide that you want to go with any part. So whether it's the LM46002 or the LMZ36002, you can easily compare both solutions in WebBench by going to the product folder. So if you were to type LMZ36002 into the product folder, it'll lead you straight to this interactive design tool. When you click on Explore Now, it'll lead you to this page where you can change your inputs and outputs that you need. And then when you click compare solution, it'll ask you which part you want to compare it to. And you can put that part in there. If it's the LMZ34202 or any other device, it'll give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the thermals, of the schematic layouts. It's very intuitive and easy for the busy power designer to use. That's cool. All right, Tanil, give me an overview of the whole TI DC to DC situation. For the TIYVN step-down portfolio, we obviously have thousands of parts that customers can pick from. Here we're looking at a TIYVN DC-DC step-down portfolio of some of our hero parts at TI. Some of these devices are synchronous. Some of these are full-featured non-synchronous solutions, meaning that they do not include the low side FET, so you would need an external diode. And then we also have some hero module parts that come in both leaded and non-leaded package options. If you really want to power a 24 volt rail, we were able to provide a test case or an ideal case where you could use a regulator or a module. However, we have other devices that you may want to consider. And again, you can always go through WebBench if you want to select the part that you need for your application. Very cool. We are always developing the latest and greatest devices at TI. So even though we have not released these parts yet, they are available as preview devices. You can still get the data sheet. You can still make designs in WebBench. And as soon as they release to market, you will be able to sample the part as well. Cool, all right. Here we have about 40 or 50 different parts that you can consider for your design. Let's say that you know your key concern is small footprint or maybe you want a low bomb cost or maybe you want a high efficient solution or maybe you just want a fast time to market solution. We have devices that will fit your need with different low currents all the way up to five amps. And these are all YVN, meaning greater than 36 volt rail that will power a 24 volt solution. Solution. All right, Tanil, I think I'm ready to get started. Where should I go for more information? The Simple Switcher ETE forum can be easily accessed from ete.ti.com. So if you have any questions that were not answered today, we have a 24-hour guarantee response rate if you were to enter a question into our ETE forum. You can also interact with subject matter experts. You can read our latest blogs. And you're also encouraged to join our community where you can get the latest updates from the Simple Switcher team. You can also, again, access WebBench from the product folders or TI.com. You can create customized power design solutions for your circuit in minutes, and you can also solve power supply design problems before prototyping. You can get the latest Simple Switcher products and support by visiting www.simpleswitcher.com. We have a list of reference designs, and with these reference designs, I have selected some of the key designs that can get you easily started. Here, I have four or designs that feature the parts that we talked about today and maybe some other components as well. But we have a list of more designs at simpleswitcher.com. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Janiel. Thank you. Have a great day. And before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about TI Power Products from Mauser. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out EE Journal's YouTube channel, keyword EE Journal, or head on over to the on demand section on eejournal.com.